All right, g'day guys. Welcome back to the True Footy Podcast 97. Today's episode, I am uh, doing it solo today and I uh, thought it would just be uh, a good, fun way to, to do a 20K Q&A video. Uh, I'm not a huge guy with the... I'm not a huge fan usually of the, the Q&A style vids or at least for me personally. I like to watch them, uh, but I have... Not really taking part of too many. I might have done a 5K one back in the day, back in 2019 when I was all motivated and stuff. Uh, but today, I thought uh, it's, it's a nice milestone to hit, I suppose, and uh, gives a little chance to have uh, a bit of a conversation both about footy and about um, the channel itself as well. I suppose, you know, like leading up to the milestone of hitting 20K, like I've been around this, on the brink of this milestone for like what feels like probably... 15 months. I reckon I got to about close to 18k at the start of the 2021 season, or sorry, 2022 season even. Had a massive 2021, burned myself out, went from like 10k to 18k or whatever it was in the space of a year. So I've been around this 18k mark for so long that 20k has not really... Um, Oh, I'll phrase it this way. I think I was. I feel disappointed that I didn't hit it earlier, and therefore it was almost. I didn't really have the the drive to really try and hit that twenty k for some reason. I hope I'm making sense here. I'm I'm still warming up. It's early in the podcast, but I feel like because I was on the brink of it for so long, and then I kind of let the channel slip, kind of let myself down a little bit with it. Um, not that I hold that too much against myself. It's just that my focus and interest changed. Um, so long story short, I didn't think I'd care about 20k, but I suppose hitting it this week, um, it's come at a time where I'm genuinely really grateful and I'm really, really happy with the way the channel is going at the moment. The The feedback from you guys has been fantastic. The support has been unreal. I'm uh, really feeling the love and I really, really appreciate it. So that's kind of what's motivated me to do a little video like this um, to sort of express that. Um, and, and things are things are going really well and it's kind of consi- coincided with things my life generally is going pretty well I, I feel at the moment you know I'm on the brink of this exciting move um, to move to the UK this year and still still make videos for you I'll be I'll be working harder because I have to be getting up earlier to watch the games um, but uh, my plan is to get once I get to the UK that this is going to I'm going to have to try and make this my job for the summer. So I could have gone over there and got a job straight away and um, wouldn't have been able to travel freely because, you know, I would have gone to a new job and had no annual leave, etc. So I probably would have just been relocating to another part of the world and living the same nine to five lifestyle. Whereas a, my ideal scenario is having the summer over there slash the footy season over here to be able to travel freely and... Um, probably live like a uni student again in terms of my budget. Um, Obviously, going from a job that, you know, I didn't make a a massive amount of money, but I I lived comfortably and I was able to save and things have been good and I've been in a very comfortable place in my life. Um, So I'm going to throw myself into the deep end to some extent and it's going to be tough to to try and make ends meet, but I think that is the fire that's going to fuel me going into um, throughout this season and and I'm pretty happy and satisfied, maybe not proud, but satisfied to some extent that I've done everything I can so far on the channel and there is so much shit going on in my life right now. Um, You can't really tell this because the set looks the same to you. It's just my bedroom, but everything in my house is gone. My roommate's gone. He's gone to the UK as well separately, but he's already gone. So the house is just like, it's a mess at the moment. Um, And so in between this podcast, I have a call with someone after this, then I'm going to do a live stream for you. And in between that, I'm just going to be throwing shit out cleaning it, putting things on Facebook Marketplace. And then, you know, it's, I've got a six-day week at work this week. This is my one day off, and I'm <clears throat> committing to do this for you as well. And that comes from a place of feeling good at the moment, feeling motivated, um, and, you know, also wanting to to deliver on the promise to some extent and the, and the faith you guys have shown in me as well. Um, and all the support's fantastic. So I'm also in a bit of a sweet spot as well. I think while things... Well, I was looking a little bit or feeling a little bit uh, demotivated around the channel, particularly this time last year. I felt very much that some of the effort that was required to make good videos, um, I wasn't able to put in anymore because uh, I didn't want to and I didn't feel like the reward was there. And I think this, the format of the channel has gotten pretty stale or had gotten pretty stale. 
whereas so far this year, I feel like the, the types of content I've made, um, e- even little things like just doing a review video every week, it's, it just breaks up the monotony of footy tips and then a list of 10, 10 things in the AFL, be it 10 breakout players or, um, you know, ranking videos and stuff like that, stuff that's a little bit robotic, a bit monotonous. Um, the format has gone well. I'm, I'm sort of just turning on the camera these days and talking. And even things like the Eagles videos, which I'm going to be doing this year. Um, and I really appreciate the support around those as well. People are saying that they're interested in me doing that every week, um, you know, provided I'm still doing all the other content as well. Uh, that means the world and, it, and it's that's going to be content that I enjoy. So long story short, the the flow of content that I've got going on, in addition to Druzy helping us out on True Footy this year, in addition to Busher get, having a crack at his own content as well, um, it's fantastic. It's all very exciting and I'm enjoying making content again. So yeah, that was a long-winded intro. Um, I'm going to take a breather here and have a sip of coffee. The tough part about these solo podcasts is that uh, there's no other person to break up the monotony and talk so that you can have a drink of water and get your breath a little bit. So I'll do my best. Um, But the format of today's video is to talk about, um, well, everything I've just talked about, but also answer some questions. I put it out on Instagram. Um, It's a QA and a style video and you guys have been great and put in, I don't know, 20 odd questions there. So I'm going to rattle through them. There's a variety of topics. Um... Predominantly about YouTube, but a lot of it about footy as well, um, and stuff like that, and some funny ones in there as well. So we'll go through all of that shortly. As always, guys, I can't go through the podcast without shouting out the sponsors of the True Footy Podcast, which is Manscaped.com, uh, who have been with us for a whopping three years nearly, um, since I moved into this place, actually. I think the first ad I recorded was in this room right here. Um, so they've been a fantastic sponsor and a huge reason why um, this has gotten some legs and been able to, I've been able to produce more content and, and, you know, to be honest, been more motivated for it. So they've been a fantastic sponsor. And on top of that, they do make great products. I am not, there's no BS. I'm a manscaper. I have been since I was 18. And the Lawnmower 4.0 genuinely gets the job done very, very quickly. Had my wisdom teeth out recently. The chest hair had grown out. For some reason, I just like to keep my, my chest hair shaved. I think it kind of motivates me at the gym um, because I've always been into my gym that a little bit less body hair, you, you kind of see the gains a little bit more. I don't know, it sounds weird. This is not for everyone perhaps, but when I have a, sh- a clean shaved chest um, and I'm feeling <sighs> groomed, that's a sad, interesting word to use these days, but w- <laughs> I didn't think I was going to have to edit much in this podcast, but I am going to have to edit some things out. When I'm feeling uh, well looked after and I'm, I'm taking care of myself, I feel better as well. And um, yeah, when I had my wisdom teeth out, obviously let things go for a little while and the man the, the lawnmower 4.0 um very quick and easy job i'm trying not to get a gross image in your head of me in the shower shaving my chest but it is a fantastic tool the lawnmower 4.0 i mean and um yeah uh, i'm a big fan of their products i use them genuinely like every week so the cool thing is just go to the website manscaped.com have a browse and you get 20 percent off and free shipping if you use the code truefooty20 so you be getting a great product you get a great discount you would also be helping me out but you don't have to do it just to help me out do it if you want the product you find inter- you find um you have some interest in it and you would use it definitely recommend it great product let's get into the podcast Okay, cool. So the first question we have is from Oliver Mears, and he asks, can you remember the first video that you uploaded? Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, origin of the True Footy channel was originally just a podcast uh, that we originally just did on YouTube because didn't really understand how audio platforms worked at the time. And to be honest, for a guy who's been doing this for a while, you'd be amazed how little I know and how little production prowess uh, I have. In fact, my predictions video that I did, the latter prediction video this year as a tangent, Everyone commented on how good the thumbnail was. UCAT did that for me. I, uh, I slung him a few bucks to make a thumbnail for me uh, as part of this vision to try and improve the, the branding of the channel. Um, and that's why that, podca- that um, thumbnail is fantastic and all the rest that I make are very average. But um, getting back to the original question, the first video we did was the True Footy Podcast 1 and it was wrapping the trade period. Uh, 2017, Joycey and I and my place in Brentwood, which I'm currently half living at now, that's my dad's house. Um, we had the spare room. We had just moved into that place. My dad lived overseas at the time. So it was literally a free, like a completely empty, uh, three or four bedroom house, uh, three bedroom, I think four, 
the spare room, which um, you know still doesn't get used at the moment, we just set that up with a trestle table, a couple of chairs. Uh, we actually spent like a hundred bucks at Bunnings um, with my discount uh, that uh, allowed us to set up a room. And the, the stupid thing is, the one thing we didn't invest in was a tripod. Daniel Busher was standing behind the trestle table or sitting, holding the camera for an hour. What a ridiculous thing to do. We could have easily just let it, put it on the bench. Busher could have sat in in the podcast with us, but he's he's behind the camera and you can start to see the camera wavering for a while. What a trooper. What an absolute animal. Because uh, originally Busher wasn't as such part of the True Footy channel when it started. We kind of involved him a little bit. He was helping out. But by episode three or four, I think he was in it. And it's amazing because now he's such a central part of the channel uh, and, and is, um, you know, universally loved like uh it's, it's great that bush has um over time gotten more and more involved and yeah as i said he's a central part of the channel but it was just it's so funny to think that he was holding the camera for an hour long podcast um so i thought that podcast went well we didn't really understand how to drive traffic uh, i didn't even put afl in the title which is a rookie mistake um but yeah from then on um uh, things just sort of went i think the first five videos were all podcasts and then then I had the idea that the the best way to have growth is to to make shorter videos around that podcast, build build some, well, drive some traffic, build some recognition. And then eventually people would start watching the podcast and ideally thinking we had some interesting things to say. So that's how it's happened. Um, but yeah, I remember that first video very very well. It was uh, it was fun. I remember being nervous. Um, and here we are, 98, 97 podcasts later. No nerves, um, but yeah, I think. I like to think I'm a little bit better at delivering on camera than I was. But anyway, YOLO, as they say. We have a question from Chris, Chris Chung, uh, who I've met in person. G'day, Chris. Um, sub to or follow WA Draft Prospects or WA Footy Draft Prospects. I'll put it in the description of this video. On Instagram, he does great content with, around like young under 18 WA prospects every year. And I think this year is going to be a good haul for them. So. Definitely give it a follow if you're interested in the draft. Uh, but he says he doesn't have a question, but he's been a listener or slash follower since 2018. That's amazing. That's cool. That's so cool. Thank you so much, Chris. Really appreciate your support. Um, and anyone who's been around since that long. Um, so yeah, like I said, we started in late 2017. I There was two moments where, um, where there was a bit like in 2018 where I was like, oh my God, this channel actually... Um, has not a degree of influence, but people actually watch this. There was two. There was one podcast we released and I, we messed up the audio the first time. We uploaded it and we're like, oh shit, that, that's no good. I'm going to have to pull it and um, and upload it again. And I remember deleting it. And then I got a message from a um, friend of the channel, Sean Williams. Um, <laughs> he actually messaged me saying, hey Matt, I just got halfway through your podcast and it, it stopped working. What happened? And I was literally like, What? Like, this is the first time. We didn't really get comments back in the day. We'd get some views, a couple hundred views, uh, but no comments. This was the first time I had some sort of evidence that somebody watched True Footy. That was actually pretty mind-blowing. Um, that was funny. And then the second one, uh, so that was in 2018. And the second time that happened was at the 2018 Grand Final. I was in Melbourne. Uh, I want to say it was in the parade. I was walking around the city and an Eagles fan comes up to me and says, Hey, mate, love your podcast. That blew my mind. I, I want to say we were around the 600 subscriber mark. Could not believe that anyone, uh, A, you know, watched the channel. It was still hard to believe at that point. And B, uh, would recognize me enough in person to say g'day. That was that meant a lot. I've never forgotten that. So, um, yeah, thank you to all the OGs who have stuck around since then. Because the content, uh, at least from an audio-visual perspective, it was terrible back then. And even our performances on the podcast were terrible. But I really appreciate the faith I like to think that maybe people who watched it back then saw some potential with what we're trying to do because um, it has come a long way. Still has a lot of room for improvement, particularly from a product production standpoint. Um, but yes, I'm very, very grateful in particular to those who got in early um, and have followed the channel and supported as well. So that was my long-winded answer to something that was not even a question. So thank you. <sighs> got any advice for anyone that's trying to start YouTube from Kyle Stores? I'm going to have a sip. I suppose the first question is, uh, you know, what are you making content about? Um, I'm going to assume you're talking about AFL, but it doesn't obviously have to be AFL if you're trying to start YouTube. The best thing when starting out fundamentally is making sure you have a, a niche, okay? So the niche from my example would be AFL, and that's niche enough, okay? We do some variety content like on AFL, but we don't really deviate too much from AFL, and we, we don't at all anymore. Um, 
So AFL is the niche. AFL is in the title of every video. YouTube likes to know what the video is about. So the more information you give YouTube, be it in the title um, or give it some keywords, the more it, it knows who to recommend those videos to, okay? So that's the, the tricky part about you know starting a vlog channel or a variety channel is if you're making a different topic every week, if you're not, if you don't have a reliable way to drive traffic to those videos, if you're just putting it out on YouTube, YouTube's not gonna know who to recommend that video to. It will probably push out a couple, test the waters. If it doesn't have any success, your channel won't progress as such. Um, and uh, it's not uncommon to not get momentum early like we didn't really either. That's the first thing I would say, a focus niche. Now let's assume that you uh, already know that and you are talking about AFL, okay? That, I guess following on from that, put AFL in the title as much as you can. Um, I think I see that mistake a little bit happen with um, even some fan channels as well. Uh, even the ones who have had massive success still don't put AFL in the title that much. And it's not a hard and fast rule because Caden McDonald often doesn't put AFL in his titles, but Caden's a different case where I think people, he's got a, um, what's the word? He, he's got this following and they just love to see him. And I think he's built it to a point where people are fans of Caden McDonald and he happens to talk about AFL. He doesn't need to drive traffic to AFL viewers as such. That's the way I kind of rationalize it. Um, maybe I'm talking out of my ass there, but that's the way I, th I think it's happened. It would be very hard to start uh, a smaller channel like that and not have clear direction to YouTube, Mr. YouTube, about who should be watching those videos. Um, what else would I put in that? I would just say that you need to regularly regularly upload, absolutely. YouTube likes consistency, and um, and then you would just test what videos do well and what don't. So for me, pretty early on, I figured out that my predictions videos do well, okay, because they are predictions videos. Uh, that's another tip, AFL predictions videos. Everyone wants to see where you put their team. Uh, it also interests a younger audience as opposed to you know putting out a really deeply an analytical video about some tactics or something in the AFL that's that's quite niche AFL predictions opens it right up even to a younger audience who just want to see your ladder prediction um, so yeah I figured out that that does well and therefore every week I do my AFL footy tips um, so that was something that is not necessarily the most deeply analytical piece of content, but I put it out every week because, I mean, I, I suppose people enjoy them because it gets a lot of views. I uh, also get a lot of negative views, uh, negative comments on those because you're alienating 50% of your viewers who go for the team you didn't tip in each video. That being said, overall on balance, it was a good growth tip because I, gross, I um, did that every week and the channel just progressed really well. Um, and then, you know, basics like titles and thumbnails, Titles, thumbnails, consistency, niche, um, making sure you are uploading consistently and then just testing what's doing well and what won't. I think that's all you need to worry about early on, early on. Uh, and just look at what trends are working in the AFL. Like tier makers went off in 2019, so everyone did them uh, and now they don't do so well comparatively. So hope that helps. Um, I think I did do a five tips for starting an AFL channel. So maybe search that up if you if you want. I did that back in like 2020. And um, yeah, it might have it might be repeating the same things, but I remember putting a full video into it. Most exciting team to watch this season versus least exciting uh, by just some bloke. That's his actual name. That's not me being lazy. Most exciting team to watch this season, Port Adelaide for me. And I, uh, I didn't even pre prepare that answer. I just thought of it right in that moment. Um, the core nucleus they have of young guns, Horn Francis, Rosie, Butters, in particular, Georgiatis, uh, Aaliyah down back, like, that is an exciting team. Dersma, love watching them play, really like watching them play. I, I like this Port Adelaide group, I hope Georgiatis comes to West Coast, but um, they could give it a shake this year. I'm going to stop saying that so much, I've been saying it a bit on the channel, because <laughs> they might lose in round two and I look like enough, but... True footy is not about predicting everything correctly. I'm just here to talk about football with you and hopefully there's some logic to it and it makes sense. Uh, but that is my answer. Most exciting team. Least exciting. It's got to be West Coast. It's got to be West Coast. Um, when you consider who are the least exciting teams, you would be looking at the bottom of the ladder and you'd be looking at the teams who have the least exciting youth. Who's that? Sure, we have some exciting youth now. Uh, Jinbi, Chessa. Um, 
you know, guys, Noah Long, um, Brady Hoff. Like, there's some youth that's worth getting excited about. But comparatively, it won't stack up to, say, North Melbourne, Harry Sheasel, very, very watchable player. You know, they look like they're going to be better than we all expected this year. So that's great for them. Hawthorne equally, a lot of youth, Sam Mitchell factor. West Coast is the one that people are going to be least interested in. Uh, you can make a case in Kilda as well with Ross Lyons' game style. Potentially, people are thinking um, no good, but they're going to at least win games as they beat Fremantle on the weekend. Good win. My favourite thing about footy, uh, asked Jordan Johnston, uh, whether it be atmosphere or being with mates. I think it's moments. I think it's moments. Um, yeah, I mean, all of those things are right. The atmosphere, um, being with your, your mates, in my case, it'd be, you know, Busher and um, Joycey and Druzy, the guys I watch footy with. Uh, in particular, my dad, That's a, it's like a bonding thing we have, watching the Eagles together. Absolutely. But I think it's got to be moments. When I think about all my favourite footy memories, it, it's, you know, I think of Josh Kennedy kicking the goal after the side, oh, not after the side, but deep in the game to beat Richmond at Optus. Like, that was, that's a core memory for me. I'll never forget that night. Obviously, the Dom Sheed moment. Uh, it's the moments of absolute triumph when you're listening to the crowd roar. And the beautiful thing about footy is, like, when you go to the game, for the most part, I assume other people are like me, but... Everyone's got shit going on in their life, but for this two-hour period, we are all completely engrossed in what the war that is unfolding in front of us, and it's particularly in a home Eagles game where, you know, 55 out of the 60,000, well, probably not going to pull those crowd numbers this year, but historically, 55 out of the 60,000, even more, are all going for the same team and want the same outcome, and the passion is raw, and the crowd's going nuts when we do something good. That's electric. I love that sort of stuff. And I was watching last night my old vlog of uh, when Kennedy kicked this, that goal against Richmond. And that was when it hit me for the first time. I was like, oh, I'm not going to be here this year. If we have an amazing win at her, at home, I'm not going to see it. I'm going to be in, in, in England, living my best life. But that will be, that That hit me. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to miss that, to be honest. Um, so it's the moments. It's the moments. And they're few and far between. That's the beauty of them. If they happened all the time, they um they wouldn't be as special, but we're probably not. We might not even have a moment like that this season, but we'll see. If West Coast wasn't a team, who would you go for? Um, I mean, historically, like if there was only ever one Perth team, I probably would have ended up going for Frio. But if if West Coast evaporated right now, who would I go for? Um, man, it's hard. I'm so closely attached to the Eagles that nothing even comes close. Um. I don't know. I'd, I'd probably have to watch and, until a team gripped me. Like, if it happened to be this year, I'd be like, oh, gee, Port Adelaide look exciting. Um, everyone sort of likes Gold Coast. Well, that's not true. I've kind of always liked Gold Coast as a second team because they've been non-threatening and they're exciting youth, and it's a bit of a project, kind of like how people are watching. Welcome to Wrexham right now. You're, you're watching. People are fascinated by a team going from terrible basket case, not the Wrexham or basket case, but in the dumps to going pretty all right or being legitimate. Uh, there's that appeal with Gold Coast. So I'd probably adopt the Gold Coast, but they'd probably never win enough. I, I do like the doggies, despite what people say uh, in my predictions when I don't tip them. I hate them. Not true. I like them. I think I would follow players for a little while and then I'd probably start supporting Perth in the waffle. <sighs> what a miserable experience that will be. We have a question from Hisham, friend of the channel, who says, show me your balls. No, I will not. I've already did that at 1K and then again at um, 1,487. Uh, who is your inspiration for creating this channel? Uh, I've said this before on the pod, but um, True Geordie was kind of the inspiration in that I'm a little bit older than the true YouTube generation who grew up watching YouTube and having their idols. Um, and therefore, I didn't even like watch YouTube until 2017 in terms of regular content creators. He was the one that I discovered through Joycey. And then we that was where we kind of got the idea to adapt the idea to how can we do something like this, a cool podcast like the True Geordie podcast talking about f something that we enjoy. And for us, that was footy. Um, we didn't there and then decide it was going to be called True Footy. That happened later when we were trying to come up with a name. Um, oh, I think for a while there, we were going to be called like True Footy Review or something, something like that. Um, or total footy review, something like lame, but it ended up being true footy. Uh, and the idea is in the same way that true Geordie, it, this is his brand. We wanted to be authentic 
for fans. And I, I like to think we've held up to that to some extent. Um, but yeah, that is, that's the inspiration for the channel. So thank you for, to Nicholas R43 for asking that question. Um, and following on that, Mitch Buttsworth, another friend of the channel, um, has a similar question and the biggest influence on you to deliver content. So uh, I guess you could say True Geordie was the original influence and influenced the format of the channel heavily and, and the branding, I suppose, from a authenticity standpoint, um, watching the game with your mates, all those things. Um, but I guess in terms of influence to deliver content, I'm a pretty self-driven guy, to be honest, but it, I would be remiss to not highlight, you know, in particular, my friend Drewzy, who you all know, um, I would say he influences me to deliver content in the way that he really has never wanted me to give up on this, um, which I appreciate. He's a, he's a fantastic friend, and I know that people have commented that on the podcast where you can see him in action trying to trying to motivate me and stuff like that. Um, when I say I'm self-driven, I mean I will ultimately just do what I want to do. So if I didn't want to do it, despite Drew's best efforts, I wouldn't do it, and therefore I didn't last year. And then this year, I, I just do it because I want to. But... Drew's is a fantastic friend, and I'd open that up to the other guys. We've got a group chat with Caden and the pair. Um, we're actually pretty good mates. I don't know um, how aware or many of you are or how many of you even care about that, um, but we are actually pretty good mates, and we all help each other out and talk shit. Um, well, not talk shit, but um, discuss things. Um, even someone like Terry from Blue Abroad, we, we chat not often, but when we do, it's always a very deep and profound conversation. And he's, he's got a heart of gold, that guy. And similarly, just sort of wants the best for me and, and we will talk through these things. Um, I hope I'm not forgetting anyone there, but that, that's probably the, the names that come to mind when it, when it comes to influencing me to, to want to keep doing this. Those, those are the guys probably. Actually, as an aside there as well, um, not to sound cheesy, but you guys are also a huge factor in, in my motivation as well, particularly lately. If I upload a video, either where I allude to, to losing interest or feeling demotivated or when things are going well, the supportive comments from you guys um, in particular, there's been some really heartfelt ones and I really appreciate that. It really strikes me when you can tell people want the best for me, um, which is very, very humbling. I feel like I don't deserve it. Uh, but when I read those comments, I'm like, oh shit, like these people care. And that does, you know, sort of stoke a fire in me to want to deliver on that promise, deliver on the faith that you guys have in me um, and the value that you place on the channel. It really does mean a lot. So I wouldn't under undersell that. You guys are a big part of that as well. Uh, and if it weren't for you guys saying stuff like that, I don't know if I'd be where I am right now. Um, so thank you. Uh, cool. Toughest or longest video to produce? Uh, unmistakably, or sorry, um, undeniably it would be the Adam Simpson documentary I did a couple of years ago, uh, that was 2020. It was in the summer. Um, first of all, we recorded it in the summer and I recorded it in Bush's games room where we did the podcast. It was a 38 degree day and I overrated how much the aircon would influence the mic audio. And, um, it, it was, we turned it off and it was absolutely boiling and I had a miserable day and it took me three hours to record what became a 45 minute documentary. And then um, I was just up editing that on iMovie in, um, on my little MacBook Air and like there has no storage on it. So I had to up, I had to edit 10 minutes at a time and then export it and then do another 10 minutes and export it. it that took me like four weeks. That is the only time I've really taken on a, a project like that. I did a video called the, the story of AFL 2020, I think as well. Um, which was similarly a documentary style, required a lot of footage, a lot of pulling highlights um, and research as to trying to re remember the year that was that year. Uh, that, but that only went for about 15 minutes, but that was an absolute task. Um, both of those I did in the summer because I had more time, which meant that the views were lower, but YOLO. The next one we got from Mitch Buttsworth again is um, top five true footy moments. I wish I'd prepared that, that like this. I, I kind of just sat down in front of you and um, wish I'd put more thought into this. But let me th rattle off a few for you in no particular order. So one of them was the first time I got recognized at the grand final. That was incredible. Um, <laughs> I was literally like, hey, dad, you won't believe what just happened. He was down the road. Um, so that was cool. I've already talked about that. Um the first time we collaborated for the AFL uh, in 2019, that was a very validating sort of thing. We just did a couple of clips, sent them in, 
and then um, I think we contributed to a couple of videos there where they clip up different content creators in different like little videos like predictions or or something like that breakout players I can't remember exactly what it was um, but then they decided that we we had the best entry uh, and they sent us the 2018 grand final game ball or at least one of them so that meant a lot as well um, so we're doing my first bit of work with the AFL that was cool I did a video for the AFL recently um, which you can go check out I think that's on like 20,000 views um, I think it's called like crazy predictions um, by AFL content creators that they put up on their channel so that was really nice and validating as well um, so I appreciate that what else what are the moments um, probably this week or this last week um, it's been a huge week for the channel um, uploading heaps and uh, the, I feel confident in the content as well and the feedback has been fantastic as well which I appreciate and the support so I'm feeling the love it's it, it's growing um, my life's about to change so my mindsets in a good place and um, and and the validation from you guys and the the support and the um, the respect as well you know heaps of people saying that they don't support West Coast but they're interested in my thoughts um, it's all very humbling I'm, I don't want to sound like I'm sort of talking myself up here but I just uh, I appreciate it. this week has been um, a real highlight I think historically for the channel uh, what else uh, I think a big moment as well was probably even getting. Caden on the channel for the first time and Cookson and the pair those guys that was my first foray into um, like getting podcast guests really um, we might have had a couple before that but they were just kind of my mates um, I remember being pretty nervous I remember building up to the moment not knowing how I was going to do a Skype podcast because I suck at that sort of stuff um, and then but the the interviews all went really well um, and it was great to sort of meet some like-minded people and I've become friends with all those people had on the on the show as well um Drewzy I met through the podcast had him as a guest um you know the pair Caden I've already talked about with good friends Terry had on the channel um again I consider him a good friend even though we talk like once a year um he's a great guy so that's probably one of the other moments as it were was delving into that during lockdown of 2020 and then I think probably Probably the greatest in terms of how happy it made me was the 2020 grand final that year. I had come off a bit of a rough period in my personal life. The channel had dipped. I was going through some shit, decided to really, really crack on for the 2020 finals. And then on the, the live stream, um, there was two elements to it. There was the fact that the live stream exploded. We had like 36,000 views that night. Um, people probably just thought it was... Uh, the game they were clicking onto, and it wasn't. It was just nerds sitting around drinking alcohol. Um, but it was also like just a really nice night where I had some of my best friends, like Busher, Dylan, Druzy, and his brother Sean, um, were all sinking piss, enjoying Grand Final Day, and it was also the biggest stream that we'd ever done as well. So that was a real highlight, and uh, that was a day that I vlogged and and wanted to relive it over and over again unfortunately grand final day hasn't been the same in terms of stream success since but it was a real highlight excuse the brief pause in the podcast i uh just had to take a call then but on the plus side it was a, a call that went really well uh regarding a potential business opportunity for the channel so things are starting to happen it's really exciting i can tell you a little bit more about that hopefully next week or so um yeah good stuff anyway cool moving on with the questions um Mitch Buttsworth thrown a few really good questions at us here. Uh, his next question is, what is the most rewarding thing uh, that I get from uh, providing quality content? Good question. What is the most rewarding thing? Um, the most rewarding thing is probably, I think like early days, you sort of get into the loop of um, being validated by the numbers a little bit. And when you see growth, you get that dopamine spike and in, in a sense that's the rewarding part uh, early days anyway I think these days at the moment I think just the idea that people are getting value out of the content that I am putting out um, and I say that off after a week where you know the feedback's been really good and, and life is not always so um, so rosy you know I think I think back to a couple of years ago where the Eagles played north I think it was in late 2021 and 
I had perhaps been a little bit confident in my prediction the Eagles were going to win that game and North came out and rolled us on a Monday night, on a stormy Monday night at Optus Stadium. Um, and the reason that me- that memory sticks out in my mind is I remember after that game copying quite a lot of negative attention for that. Uh, so I guess that's an example of when things are not going so well that, uh, and the feedback loop is not so positive. I'm pretty good at not letting the negative comments get to me. And when I do a lot of footy tips and predictions and stuff, it invites that. And I'm totally cool with that. That is fine. Um, but, you know, there's no, there's certainly no ego with true footy about putting my opinions out there and having them proven wrong or people just disagreeing with them, even aggressively disagreeing with them. For the most part, it's all pretty respectful anyway on true footy. That particular week was a toughie because that was the first time that I felt like I did not want to be recognized in public. Um, for the most part, like I think every time I've been recognized out in public, um, which doesn't happen all the time, it just happens a bit over the last five years. Uh, they've all been positive experiences, but that particular week there was just a barrage of people who were, um, yeah, didn't seem like they were big fans of me that particular week. And for the first time I remember thinking, shit, I really just don't want to be seen in public as true footy, uh, at the moment, but that time passes as will this time pass of, um, you know, lots of positive feedback and support, which is fantastic. Obviously it's not going to last forever. Um, but long winded way of saying, I think the most rewarding part is when people are really getting value out of the content that I provide. So one of the most complimentary things was when I did my Eagles video this week and people are quite a number of people who are not Eagles fans are saying, yeah, I I like this content. You you please keep putting it out there because um, they felt like it was a quite authentic insight into an Eagles fan's perspective. So I think when people appreciate the point of the channel, the the point of my brand and and the the idea that I'm trying to be authentic and cut through the shit. And of course, I'm going to be biased sometimes, but for the most part, I will just tell you my opinion. When people get that, that is is amazing. And of course, um, everything is validated by numbers. Unfortunately, it's a numbers-driven game that I'm playing here because it is an extremely audacious thing to try and turn what I'm doing right now into a career that pays enough to pay the bills and, and save up. Uh, I have to be driven by numbers and stuff like that. So I think that's, but that's the, probably the most satisfaction I get out of it is when I put a video out there, um, that I am just speaking my opinion and people are saying, you know, I may, they either agree with me and think I make good points or they disagree with me, but they understand the logic and, appreciate where it's coming from um that is probably really really rewarding i've moved away a lot from making content that was almost like more artistic um i'd love to be able to do that Uh, i mean like the documentary style ones or the storytelling stuff the stuff that i did pretty early days um i have moved away from that for a number of reasons like the stuff that jagger skillback does for example he's a gun at it like i cannot beat that guy at what he does not that i'm trying to beat him but um that's that sort of elite standard storytelling content like i that's just not my niche anymore and the reason for that i guess is a i'm not quite as good as it as he is um but b it's a lot of effort for very little um return on investment to be honest other than the satisfaction of putting out a great masterpiece video which he's done several times um or even like footy a to z is another really good one that absolute masterpieces of content. My content now is a lot more high turnover, but um, as long as I'm making sense, um, I'm happy with it and people are still getting value out of that. I guess recently now more than ever, I've had a lot of validation from people that I didn't know, like I didn't know people who felt this way existed, um, that they genuinely get value out of what I do. That is really, it means a lot, honestly. Um, And I hope it doesn't come across like I'm talking myself up here. I'm more actually saying it from a place of gratitude, like the, the heartfelt comments, the people enjoying what I do um, and, and getting the point of true footy. That's, that's, that's where I get the most satisfaction, to be honest. Sam Smart asked about podcast goals. So specifically the podcast, I presume you mean. Um, that is an interesting one. Uh, I think when I first envisaged what true footy would be, I would have loved to have done, you know, a true Geordie style podcast where I get some really interesting guests and unearth some interesting stories. In the time that I started True Footy to now, like not long after that, I think it might have been like 2019, 2020, uh, Dill Buckley went from being a moderately large podcast to being an absolute beast in his field, top of the field in terms of AFL content. And he's delivering exactly what I would 
one day have wanted to achieve. I took too long to do it uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, I mean, it kind of helps that Dill Buckley has some sort of presence already and he has connections and, and um, on top of that, he's an incredibly talented guy and he does a fantastic job. So I'm not, uh, not trying to sound like I'm uh, undermining what he's achieved. He's a gun. Uh, but the point, the reason I bring that up is because between him and someone like Will Schofield, who's now doing the same thing uh, with a West Australian focus, I look at two guys there who are looking at, uh, who are doing what I wanted to do and doing it as well as I could have possibly hoped uh, to have done it myself. These guys are smashing it. I love their content. And so therefore, I have lost the vision for the podcast specifically in becoming that in, in terms of getting, you know, great guests on, telling stories, particularly West Australian guests because we're best, but based in West Australia. I don't know if that's ever going to be true footy. Um, and as you know, I've never really had a, a I've never had a football guest on here uh, that played AFL anyway. We had a draft prospect, but we didn't have, we haven't had an AFL player on yet. I haven't tried that hard, uh, but even when I have tried, it hasn't really come through. So as for the podcast, I don't know if that will ever be the evolution of True Footy. It'd be nice to have guests on occasionally, but I think for the most part, it's going to be me and Bush um, and, you know, that Druzy in the future as well, talking about footy from a fan perspective. And if that's the brand, then I'm okay with that. So I'd like to get some guests on, have some interesting yarns um, about, you know, their career and, and who they are as people. But again, there's so many people doing that now to a really, really high standard that it's no longer the vision for me that it once was for the podcast specifically hope that was a good answer cool where uh favorite youtube video you've made that's a good one what is the favorite youtube video i've done um i had a couple um so back in 2020 i made a video about what the afl means to me and specifically it was talking about um you know my background of, of supporting footy uh, or supporting West Coast rather, and how I got to that point. And then in the video, I sort of elaborate on why 2018 meant so much to me. And I talk about how my mum had passed about 18 months before that happened. And I give a pretty in-depth look into what I was feeling that day on the day of the 2018 grand final. And um, yeah, I, I can't really, I don't really want to recover the video from start to finish, but um it was quite an emotionally revealing uh, video that I did. And while I don't watch it all the time and I'm sure I could have produced it, be produced it better, um, I watched it the other day and got a bit teary, to be honest. And it, it reminded me of things I haven't thought about for a long time. As time goes on, um, you know, mum passed about six years ago now. Grand final was five years ago, four and a half years ago. Um, watching that video brought back a lot of emotions for me, as you can imagine, um, something very, very close to my heart, but also sort of, sort of things that I'd buried a little bit since then. So yeah, got a little bit emotional watching it, but I'd say that's probably my favorite because I can go back and watch that and, and remember how I felt and, and I'm glad that I got it off my chest because it was, um, you know, I remember the, like making that video, I, I think it was the night before, I just couldn't sleep one night. So many things running through my head. And the, the narrative of that video and how I told that story was pretty much just playing in my head. So then when I got home from work that next day, I had a shower and I was like, all right, I'm making this video right now and just turn on the camera and spoke. And I am glad that I now have can look back at that video and it reminds me of exactly how I felt and, and it captures pretty well how I felt, you know, that day and, um, and what, you know, that grand final means to me. So to some extent, yeah, I think I get a lot of satisfaction out of that video. I can't watch it all the time, but, um, I'm really glad that I did it. And I think that it came across well, like I said, it could have been produced better, but at the same time I watched that video and, and it hits me hard. So at the end of the day, that's, that's a sign of a video that's done the job, I suppose. So that's probably my favorite video I've done. Um, yeah, that's probably the answer to that question. Next question is, where do you want the channel to be in five years? That's a good question. I, I can't think five years ahead. Um, I don't want to. I'll be 34 in five years, which is depressing. Um, I'm not a long-term goal guy. I'm a short-term guy. Annihilate what's in front of me is, is the mindset when I'm feeling good anyway. Um, excuse me. Ooh, my voice just broke like a bitch. Um... So at the moment, the goal is I'm going to go overseas and make this my job. And the goal is to last as long as I possibly can 
just from true footy, financially, obviously, not sexually. Um, <laughs> I'm going to last as long as I can financially through the footy season. And best case scenario, if I throw everything at this channel and I get through that, then that opens the door for me to try and do that every year. So I guess in five years, the fact that I'll still be doing it is an achievement in itself, to be honest. Because at some point I'm going to have to say, this is not going to cut it financially and I'll have to go back to getting a job um, in a, a field that I studied or something like that. And I'm okay with that, but I have the opportunity now to, to throw everything at it and there's a chance there's a chance that it becomes something. So I have five years to deliver on that. <laughs> well, I think I have this season to deliver on that, but I'm optimistic. So if I'm still doing it in five years, that means I've done a good job. That's all I can say. Um, Lucas Riley says, how are you such good looking? <laughs> that is definitely Druzy on a fake account. No, I'm just kidding. I know Lucas. Um, I'll take it, mate. A uh, complex array of moisturizers, creams, oils, um, anti-aging um, ointments. <laughs> um, thank you, Lucas. Uh, what else we got? Uh, Footy ADZ asks, thoughts on coming to Melbourne after the UK? Uh, this is a viable thing. Um, it will be predicated on the success of how well this year goes on True Footy. If it flops, I'm not going to lie. It, the appeal of Melbourne will be lower. The, the drawback to Perth is family. I've got my sister here. My dad is 70 this year and um, not to be morbid, he's in really good health. But uh, like, you know, I, I've lived so far away from my family for most of my life that I don't really want to be living in a different country and state permanently to, to my family too much more. Um, and yeah, I think that's I think that's all that needs to be said about that. I, I, I don't want to live away from my family too much. But at the same time, if True Footy kicks off and there's no doubt the opportunities in Melbourne will be better. So best case scenario, I, I get through the summer in England, just making footy content. Maybe when the season kicks off uh, or quiets down rather, sorry. Um, then I get a job over there in London, live my best life for a few months. And then Melbourne after that um, to hopefully ca capitalize on some opportunities and take the channel to the next level. So to answer your question, it's viable, but it, this year needs to go well for that to be an option, to be honest. I'm also an Eagles member and I love the Eagles, so I, I don't want to move to Melbourne unless I think there's a really good reason to. End of 2023 goals are Sam. That's, I kind of just answered that, I suppose. I, I want to be able to get through the footy season just doing footy content and then over the winter there, work in London. That's kind of a bucket list thing for me, to be honest. Work professionally in London, take a few months to, to do that, make a bit of content, maybe move somewhere else after that. Um, but if I can get through the season w just making YouTube videos, that is a huge success. That's my goal. Um, what else have we got? 20, 2006 or 2018? Um, again, uh, so that's from Cade Fagan. And that question is obviously, which Eagles premiership did I prefer? So I was lucky to attend both of them. I think uh, in that video I alluded to where I talk about the symbolism of that, that premiership and, and um, how much it meant to me, that meant a lot more in 2018. 2006 up to that point was probably the best day of my life, but considering what I was sort of going through, we were going through as a family, um, 2018 meant a whole heap. And there's also an element to it as well where I had seen the club fall to its knees in 2007 and I'd been there through the entire rebuild. I remember when Luke Shuey was drafted, Nick Natanui, um, Tom Swift, um, you know, all those guys that were part of that premiership, I was there when they were recruited and, and I saw the evolution of them from being teenagers to premiership players, premiership heroes. Uh, for those two reasons, 2018 means more to me. But, you know, they were both pretty damn good. Huntsman asks, once you're in the UK, will the mangoes be different? This is an inside joke that I do not want to elaborate on. Um, I'm Hopefully there's no mangoes, Huntsman. <laughs> um, Angus Smith asks... What NBA team do I go for? I don't go for any team, to be honest. Uh, back in the day, I played like 2K6, and I think uh, Kobe Bryant was in that game, and I, I loved playing for the Lakers. It might have even been an earlier 2K than that. Uh, but So I just played with the Lakers, and then nowadays when I play 2K, which is very rare, I'll play as Golden State because I like playing as Steph Curry, but I don't, I don't follow the NBA, to be honest. Thoughts on the Crows and Eagles' future? Um, I'll just give you a short, sharp answer to this one. The Crows... 
look like they are very well coached and I think have a bright future. I think they probably still need to do some recruiting to flesh out that best 22, maybe a big dynamic midfielder, maybe a key back, but what team doesn't need to recruit at the moment. But I think it bodes really well for them that the team is playing really well despite being young and not having the most obvious top picks in their side when you contrast it to, say, a Gold Coast who have, you know, Raul, Anderson, Ben King, etc. Um, Adelaide have done it really, really professionally and, and really successfully so far. So I think they will be a contender before too long, but I do think they need to add some top liners to that midfield. As for the Eagles, somebody also asked, this ties into another question here, when will the Eagles next make the finals? Um, I'm scrolling. Leo King. Leo King asked that. So the future does not look amazing in the short term for us. I was hoping that we would have a decent year this year, and that's still that's possible because a decent year is probably just avoiding the bottom four at this rate. Um, but in terms of when the Eagles are going to next make the finals, I think they need four good drafts before they can really climb. And I think we've had two pretty good drafts. So we need to draft well this year. We need to draft well in 24. In 25, it'll still be too early. So I think best case scenario, 26, 2026 is when the Eagles next make the finals. And that's probably optimistic, but I have seen the Eagles fall apart in 2007 and make the top four after just three years out of, out of the eight. So I've seen crazier things happen. But uh, I wouldn't bet on that again. I think we are less well-placed than we were in 2010, uh, going into 11. Uh, so I think I think it's going to take some time. So 2026. The next Eagles skipper, I think, will be... Well, I think is a chance to be Oscar Allen or Tom, uh, Tom Barras. Tom Barras is a vice-captain. Oscar Allen is not. But I think Oscar Allen missing the, f- the season last year was a factor. But I think Allen wants to be captain. He hasn't said it, but I think his demeanor and the way he conducts himself and him like almost coaching from the bench last year. Um, you know, as a young guy, I think that was really impressive, but Tom Barras would also be a viable option. So I think if it happens next year, it's probably Barras, but if Shuey kicks on for one more, which is unlikely, then it'll probably be Allen. So I'd say Barras probably. Drewsy says favorite Metro's moment. I, I can't think of a single Metro's moment. That was really good. Sorry. Sorry. I remember that we, we had a, a few good, like, Pre's where we'd be getting a little bit leery and um, that's not the right word. Have a few drinks and then have some good yarns before Metro's. We had some fun nights, but in terms of moments, I got nothing for you, mate. Um, cool. I think that might be it. I think that might wrap up the questions on this 20K uh, q and I'll, I'll just keep looking one second. Oh, yep. There was one I missed from uh, Luca Regato who says, when are you going to start supporting a real AFL team? Harsh. I can't believe I almost missed that one. Um, that's a tricky one, because if I say never, that implies the Eagles are not a real football team. Um, I'm sticking with the Eagles, mate. And um, not to get into the um, the mud slinging, but I think we're a pretty good club, bro. All right, so just settle down. All right, guys, that will wrap up my 20K Q&A. Um, hopefully that was enjoyable. Hopefully it wasn't just um, self-indulgently. I was really trying to make that not sound like... Um, that I'm just thrilled with myself. I, I was more coming from a place of, of appreciating you, uh, feeling excited about where the channel's going, feeling excited about where, where my life's going. Um, I don't know if I'm I'm an excited I'm excited about it yet. I feel like there's work to do. Um, that being said, it is going to be very liberating and very free, um, which I'm excited about. So um, keep an eye out for new, more content on the channel, guys. I'm doing a live stream later today. I'm already knackered, um, and I've still got to clean this place up. Um, so busy boy, busy boy. And, um, but I do appreciate you all. Um, thank you very much for your support and, uh, yeah, keep an eye out for more content. Appreciate you. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers guys.